of the five Marines in the vehicle, three died immediately. One, he passed away nine months later. I am the sole survivor of that attack. Literally broken head to toe. Broken leg, two broken ribs, broken shoulder, head injury, two blood clots, brain surgery in Baghdad. Somewhere in the transport between Baghdad and Landstuhl, Germany, it is noted that I had a seizure uh, mid-flight. We have many veterans who are developing epilepsy years after they come back from war, and we need to figure out some way to help them. Because when we talk to these people, we hear that their seizures are one of the primary things that set back the rest of their rehabilitation, regardless of the rest of their injuries. You have someone who's recovering nicely, and then they have a seizure. The seizure itself can disrupt their recovery, but then the medications and treatment afterwards do further harm to their rehabilitation trajectory. We have post-traumatic epilepsy from people who have tumors or stroke or viral infections, and it's likely that the mechanisms that change a brain from a normal state to an epileptic state after some kind of injury are common. So anything we learn in this research can be broadly applied to any acquired epilepsy. The idea of the seizures being a more prevalent thing in my life uh, in the future um, scares me. I don't want to be able to, be able to not drive myself somewhere, or I don't want to not be able to go on a hike. Um, you know, I love paddleboarding. I'm out paddleboarding and uh, something happens, you know, um, it's entirely possible I'm not coming back up for air. For all the military families out there, if we can begin to identify who is at risk for developing further consequences of injury, such as epilepsy, then we can improve their quality of life long after they've returned.